Hey, this is Kat. Welcome back to Standing in Faith. I'm in the studio with Jeff. Hey. And David. Hey. Ephesians 6.13 says, Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything, to stand. So we're going to talk about standing, and what is standing, what does it look like? So this will take a while to uh, get into all the aspects of standing. Well, if you think about it, that we've, we've been talking about waiting, right? Mm-hmm. And I actually think standing is a part of waiting. Sure. I do. Yeah. Although I also kind of think we get the the whole American mentality kicks into gear and stand to me is an idle activity. Mm, like idle as in not a worship not idol, doing something. but I-D-L-E, mm-hmm. idle. Yeah. Like you're yeah. just doing nothing, right. you're just standing. Yeah, I'm, I'm not doing anything. I'm just standing, waiting, twiddling mm-hmm. my thumbs type. It's an in-between like activities thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I don't believe that that's what that word means at all. I agree. I think it's a, it's a verb that has action to it rather than just a noun that is something that you do. Mm-hmm. That's the same way with weight, the way we looked at weight before, mm-hmm. too. And even in Hebrew, the seven or eight aspects of weight. So I think stand is, is like that. A lot of times we think weight just means, okay, I got to sit and wait, wait, you know. And then stand, okay. But in this one, you know, if you go on and read the rest of that, stand, having this done, having this done, and so forth. Um, but we have to look at it. Because, and ultimately what he's getting at is, I want you to stand because you've got all these um, principalities and powers that, you know, are out here that can create a lot of problems for you. It doesn't say, and I think this is important, it doesn't say, therefore, fight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of believers get into this whole thing, well, i got to fight the devil. Oh, you don't want to get into that battle. You yeah. No. Even Michael, in essence, when he was, they were arguing over Moses' body in Jude, uh, looked at the devil and said, the Lord rebuke you. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Yeah. yeah. You know, he didn't rebuke him. He said, the Lord rebuke you. So, yeah, we have to be a little careful with all of that, so where we're headed. Because I know groups, and let me give you an example. I know groups that that want to do this group warfare, and so they get in there and they start shouting at the devil, you know. And I call it they take take their water pistols, you know, <laughs> to try and attack hell. But but they think they're doing this great warfare. Well, some of you may not know Leanne Payne. Uh, I know her well. I have attended some of her seminars. She's gone to be with the Lord now, but she's got several books out there on healing and stuff. Great, great uh, uh, anointed woman of God. But, and she would go into it, they would go into a city and they put on a week-long seminar for healing Mm -hmm. uh, and different aspects of it. And it was really powerful. And so one of these groups that's going to do this warfare decided, hey, we're going to prepare the way for her. You know, Mm -hmm. so we're going to shut down all the principalities around here and the powers and we're just going to make it so she'll have an easy time. Well, that's her naivete in doing that. And she found out about it and she cringed, of course. Well, anyway, they went about doing their thing. She said when we got to the city, they had so stirred up all of that stuff in the atmosphere. It took them three days before they could really get in to their ministry and what they were doing because there was so much activity. They just brought all this stuff. And and that's what happens. They, you don't have that authority. Exactly. It's an authority issue. It's an authority issue, and that's why we have mm-hmm. to be very careful. You can, over your home, you can do that all day long, and you have all kinds of authority. You know, we, we think, well... Uh, what is a 97-pound housewife going to do? She has a lot of authority mm-hmm. anointed by the Holy Spirit. 
but her authority realm is within her household or where she works or whatever it may be in that context, same as with a man or whatever. I'm just using that in a mm-hmm. loose, loose way. But, yeah, it has to do with the authority realm of where you are. You don't want to start casting um, devils out of some neighbor you have even. Now, you can bind, you know. That's a part of it. Anyway, I'm getting a little too far out. No, there, it's so. interesting that we're Go going here because yeah. you know what? This is kind of what I'm, what I'm sensing. It's not what we planned on talking about, but that's okay. I think it's what we need to talk about, yeah. right? And that is what's contending against us while we're waiting and while we're standing, mm-hmm. right? And I think it's, I think often we foolishly believe nothing is contending against our promise, our faith. And our hope. And I don't believe that to be true at all. So it's kind of interesting that we're going down this path um, because I've I've felt the nudge towards this lately also. So I, I think it's I think it's Holy Spirit doing this, right? It's starting to illuminate the fact that I think I wouldn't say that we've let our guard down. I I almost feel like we've yeah, we've kind of taken off our armor. Yeah, yeah, and we've <clears throat> we're vul- we're we're more vulnerable yeah. because we've kind of either dis- passive is the word you want. Yeah, we've gotten passive to it, and, and that's exactly right. And that's one of the greatest entry points for the for the whole demonic world is passivity. Is when you go passive, you open a door for their activity. Now, here, here's something we have to be very clear about. You're not opening a door for some little thing to come in and possess you, but you open the door for them to come in and influence you in some capacity or other when we're passive because you're not aware. You're not, to stand means you're alert. Correct. You know? And you're alert to the fact that there's this stuff in the atmosphere. We don't worship it. We don't spend a lot of time on it. God forbid. Mm-hmm. But we, you know, if we worship and glorify God and meditate on Him and look to Him, then in essence, you are in a very good place because that's the best spiritual warfare you can do. Now, let's go to 2 Corinthians 10, where it says, We don't fight against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, powers, in high places, so forth and so on. So, that's the other thing. So when we're looking at contending with these things, what happens, um, and I'm going to use the word encroachment because I think it's a very good word, um, how these little monsters encroach into our lives. They encroach through slander or through suggestions or getting you to be paranoid or thinking things that are happening that aren't happening. A lot of different scenarios that can can happen, and even to bring wedges between you and a friend or whatever. Subtle, S- very subtle. They're subtle, mm-hmm. yes, and deceptive, and deceptive, and yeah. sneaky, and quiet, and they they intrude mm-hmm. before you even realize that they've intruded. Yeah. And and then we start thinking that it's the person, you see, and and, and every context, it's not about people. No. It's about the influence either that is on them or on you or who who we're listening to, what we're being accused of and what we're listening to, the kind of lies that we believe. All of those kind bring in context. And and that that's what I don't know if you know what the fifth column. You know what a fifth column is? No. Okay. So in military terms, a fifth column doesn't exist in a in a company. There's four platoons. And it doesn't exist there. So they call it a fifth column or fifth, you know. What that is is basically it's it's that column that comes in to separate, to divide. It's a sneaky one that comes in. It's like guerrilla warfare in a sense yep. um, that comes in to sabotage systems, to divide, to, to you know, to bring all of that kind of stuff up. It's amazingly sneaky in households and families and stuff like that. Yep. Um, 
and, and you know, you probably stop and think about that. You can you can see how applicable that can applicable that can be. Mm-hmm. So, but th- but that's what happens, and I think that's why we have to. We go back to standing. We have to really be alert and focused on that kind of thing, and recognize, you know, that. I mean, I, girded. We need to be prepared. Yes. It's yes. Part of standing is the preparation. But I want to kind of jump in here because I I'm back to our culture. I feel like we dismiss this stuff. We yes. dismiss it as being a spirit. And I'm I'm just going to call it an unclean spirit, mm-hmm. right? It, we dismiss it, and we accept it as our own thoughts, our own feelings, our own beliefs. Well, I actually think that we often dismiss unclean things, thinking that it's us, which then leads us to feeling negative about ourselves and judging ourselves, right? I'm not even going to go down that path, but the point I guess I'm trying to make is I feel like it's more prevalent than we realize. Now, I'm also not going to suggest that we need to go casting stuff out, right? And no. we need to become, the, to your point, yeah. fighting hell with a water pistol right. um, because that's that's silliness. But for each and every one of us, for ourselves, while we're standing, we take all of our thoughts captive, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and we we call it our thoughts – but we need to source our thoughts. Where did that one come from? Mm-hmm. Did that one come from me? Did that one come from Holy Spirit? Or did that one come from something unclean? And I've come to the conclusion that the vast majority of my thoughts that I would categorize as unclean are not mine. Which means a lot of this, if back to your fifth column, right, that is going to be an attack on you, mm-hmm. your identity who you are, right? And then it's going to become an attack on God and who God is. And if he is, if he actually does love you, if he actually is faithful, if he actually fill in the blank is good, right? Um, so that's how it's going to come as those subtle attacks against who you are, who God is, and therefore back to the authority point, it undermines all your authority, because if you don't know who you are and you're not sure who God is, then you don't have any spiritual authority. Right. The interesting thing, and I, I want to go back to a point you made and give you an example, that our thoughts are not always, uh, it, it, and, and maybe you'll recognize this, you're doing good. You know, your, your, your thought life, you're doing good. Mm-hmm. You walk up to a group of people talking, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, you're barraged with all of these kind of thoughts. They could be evil thoughts, yep. unclean thoughts, whatever they may be. And you think, oh, my God, what's wrong with me? Yeah, where's all that coming Where's from? all that coming from? Why yeah. did I, you know, what you did <clears throat> is you walked into and under the influence of whatever it was in that group, may have been one person or whatever, that was releasing this kind of stuff. And, and what I learned early on is when that happens, it's just to stop and say, no, I refuse to come under exactly. the influence of that yep. spirit. Mm-hmm. And it's that simple. And it's that simple. It is that simple. And, that's... and that stuff will just go away. Mm-hmm. But that's what's happening. And that, you know, a lot of times we blame right now. Well, I better go get some prayer or whatever for this. And, and you know. I got to cast that out. Cast that out. And <laughs> it wasn't casting anything. It was getting out from the influence of that thing and how it was affecting you. Um, it, it's the same way you're doing really good about somebody, right? You, you have this very good relationship. So, and then you, you go and meet another friend and they start all of a sudden barraging this person with all of this kind of filthy stuff and gossip and everything. And all of a sudden you start feeling all this animosity towards that person. Well, guess what you did? You just bought into the lies and came under that same spirit. It's the same thing. Mm-hmm. And it, it's just, that's part of this being aware of standing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you back up to uh, verse 11 in Ephesians 6, it says, put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. So That's good. 
Yeah. And it's, that's it's just schemes. all the little schemes. Mm-hmm. And so, the one you guys have been talking about, that's like the literally the oldest trick in the book. So I, w- I want to talk a little bit about authority because you brought this up. Um, so when I think of authority, especially when it's a spiritual authority, I always put it in a context of an atmosphere and my jurisdiction in, over, or under that atmosphere. Right. Um, so I think a lot of times people mistake an authority to be like a badge and a gun. And yes, they are they are forms of authority, but it's not the function of authority. So when I'm thinking in terms of spiritual authority um, and whether I'm moving in it, under it, through it, <laughs> right, o- over it, um, I'm always thinking of what, what's that – what is my jurisdiction in this atmosphere or this space? So for instance, I don't think I necessarily have jurisdiction for the United States. I don't think I have jurisdiction for North Carolina, which is the state that I'm, I'm living in. Um, But I, I definitely feel that I do have some jurisdictions in different places, right? Mm -hmm. When I walk in, I can feel that I am actually, and I can sense, I can actually see based off of the anointing, which we probably want to describe next, Mm -hmm. right, where my jurisdiction is Mm -hmm. and what I have and what I can do in those spaces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it doesn't mean that we don't pray for North Carolina or pray for the United States because we can bless it and do all that kind of stuff and and ask God to chase away all the things, ask God to chase away stuff, but we don't stand up and go start yelling and screaming, I'm binding these big principalities and powers and all that kind of stuff. We don't want to do that. Um, the best one is the Lord rebuke you. Mm-hmm. It really is just a, a good way uh, of, of doing it because it doesn't create an arrogance. Now, let's go back to your authority. I want to give you a picture of that. Yeah. So if if you're driving down the street and a police officer comes out into the street puts his hand up, you see his badge, guess what? You'll stop. At least hopefully you will. Yes. Today, who knows? But anyways, this is hopefully you will. Yeah, I would stop. stop. Uh, Now, would I stop? Because if if that man had come out into the street and he didn't have a badge or anything else on, would I necessarily stop? I guess it, for me, Mm -hmm. it, a lot of it starts to depend Exactly, but is he crazy looking? Yeah. And he's got handcuff, broken handcuffs on, and an orange <laughs> get up. No, I wouldn't stop for him. Right. Right. Well, the point that the point I want to make is the reason you stop is is because you saw the badge. It wasn't because of the man himself necessarily. No, um, because you saw the badge as now, the form. What he represented. Yeah. yeah, but what we have to realize is what is behind that badge is a whole government system of yes. courts and, you know, all the way up to basically president of the United States um, is behind that, that mm-hmm. hopefully this day and time, who knows? But anyway, let's, we're looking at it in a good sense. Okay. Yep. So that badge represents that authority that back this person all up. Mm-hmm. Well, the same thing is true of us. That's our authority in the spirit realm, is this, it, 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 we wear, in a sense, that authority. Jesus said, and we'll talk about Pentecost in a few weeks, but mm-hmm. Jesus said, go and wait in Jerusalem to your year endued with authority. That word power, dynamite, also means authority. To your endued with that power, that authority. Um, Jesus says, behold, I give you authority and power over all, all of the Yep. Works of the of the devil. Yeah. But he said, Hey, don't rejoice in that. But rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. That's yep. our rejoicing. So our I, we have this immense and powerful authority. Exactly. At the same time, we have to be very careful that in we don't use it arrogantly or we don't use it once again out of our realm that God has put us in. Yeah, I, I agree with you because when I think about that, I'm thinking about I'm seated with Christ 
in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. Well, what do kings sit in other than thrones? And what do they do from a throne other than rule and reign? Um, So if I'm seated, that means I'm sitting in Christ while he's ruling and reigning. So I'm, again, a co-laborer with him in ruling and reigning, which gives me an enormous amount of authority, right? So I'm with you on that. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's recognizing when to engage that. Yes. Right? Yeah. Under his guidance, his direction, that goes back to what Jesus said. He only did what he saw his Father in heaven doing. He only said what he heard his Father in heaven saying. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. He did not step beyond that which he was given. Mm-hmm. That's kind of where I'm heading with all of that. But I agree with you. Well, I think it's, a, you know, it's an interesting thing. I remember when... Um, my son Joshua was a little boy. Um, I guess he was probably 12 or so, 13, maybe that age. He was collecting comic books. And um, so one day I was praying, and it just there felt like there was this disturbance in our household. Something wasn't right. And um, so I asked God, I says, mm-hmm. Lord, where is this coming from? What's What's going on? So I could... Because uh, uh, the other part is having knowledge, you know, mm-hmm. of, of what this could be, what's going on. Yeah. And I said, what is? Well, it, it immediately God took me into Joshua's room. I didn't see what it was. But I started thinking, okay. So I, I sat down with Joshua. I said, Joshua, um, God showed me these kind of things. And um, I, I kind of wonder about your comic collection. Have you? collected any that are kind of diff- well yeah he had he'd 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 bought some of these comics for his collection that were very much occult mm-hmm. and he uh, brought them into the house uh-huh. and uh he i mean he didn't know he he you know he, he just thought they were weird situation whatever but he brought them in the house well it kind of gave an open door for this kind of disturbance to take place yeah so Hey, I said, hey, don't worry about it. Give me those. Buy something different. I'll get rid of them, and I'll give you the money in exchange. You know, it was, it was a good thing. That's fair, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and he, you know, he understood then, too, because he realized something was going on. You know, mm. got rid of those. Peace came back. Mm. So nice. there's there's all kinds of situations like that that we we um, we often have to ask the question, you know, God, what's going on here? And and I think that's what keeps it, it, it's like encroachment that's so subtle. Mm-hmm. It encroaches in our relationships. It encroaches in on churches and fellowships mm-hmm. and whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. Is God, what's going on here? You know, learning to ask God because God wants to show us so that we can deal with it. Yeah, I'm thinking that that's. That's part of standing, right? Um, it, because later, I don't remember what verse it is, but it's it's in chapter 6 of Ephesians where it says, and take out the sword of the Spirit, mm-hmm. right? It's the Word of God. That's a rhema Word of God. In other words, something that he's literally enlightened to you that you, that you use while you stand, right? So in, in bringing this kind of, back around to while you're standing, I think when you're standing, it's more than just waiting. It's it's an active, right? There's there's activity in it. There's understanding what you're seeing. So there's your eyes need to be open to see what's happening around you, right? Your spiritual senses need to be turn, tuned in and turned on. Um, you need to be paying attention to that and not dismissing things. Not accepting everything is yours, but right, being very aware that that there's other influences that may be present and possibly encroaching. Um, and then you, I think the where we're kind of heading is you take that that Holy Spirit enlightened. I, I almost want to call it a finger, right, where he points at something mm-hmm. that makes you aware that that is there. And then, then you engage your jurisdictional authority because if he's shown it to you, mm-hmm. he's he's highlighting it. Mm-hmm. You then have the authority to deal with that, 
Um, and yeah, so you can actually just dis- not dismiss that, but actually remove that mm-hmm. from being a, an influence, a detractor, or maybe even something that's trying to slip in and steal that hope, that thing that you've been waiting for in faith. Mm-hmm. I kind of got a picture of, um, I imagined like the Secret Service, uh, like say there's a president giving a speech or at a rally or like even, you know, at some official government place. I just imagine the Secret Service, like they can't just be dismissing, oh, I probably just thought I saw that guy put his hand in his jacket in some weird way. You know, it's like they'd have to be sure mm-hmm. about what is going on and and they're actively standing, observing Mm. Uh, another good one in, in, in respect to to what you were just saying um, I remember years ago we were in Romania and we were doing this uh, um, we, we were working with pastors and their wives it was on a big retreat center actually it was in an old retreat center that Ceausescu used to use for his uh, hunting and all that anyway it was interesting but <clears throat> we were in this place it was cold I remember that about it um but we were in this room and and what we did was after we had done some teaching all we were praying for the pastors and their wives and there was this one couple there and it, there was just some kind of block going on i couldn't figure out what was going on well i just happened to look in the spirit and you may think this is weird don't care really if you think it's weird because uh, it is weird um to, to, you know, basically to, to the normal world. But there, I, I, I have these, when, especially when we're out ministering in that way, I have these amazing guardian angels that, that I can actually see sometimes. All around. They're, like, they're like big Watusi warriors. And I just happened to, I had my eyes closed, and all of a sudden I saw one of these uh, angelic beings. Instead of facing outward like he was guarding us, he had turned around with his spear and he was poking it at the man. And I thought, oh, I understand. There was some spiritual stuff going on with that man that needed to be needed to be dealt with in that moment. You know, not in a whole bad way. And and so I just stopped and I, I said to the guy, you know, whatever it was I said, and, and man, their eyes came alive and they knew. You know, and so we prayed for them. They were set free of it, you know, and that was the end of it. But that's that's the case. It was just mm-hmm. one of those moments of what's going on here, God, and he showed you, you know. Now, you may not have an angel come around or whatever, but you may have some semblance of understanding. You might get an impression like, oh, this is going on with them, or, you know, or you may just have some little word that pops up into your mind or heart that says, you know, whatever this is. Mm -hmm. There's this story I recently heard uh, from a man who cleans out houses that are, you know, just junk or abandoned or whatever. Mm. And he went into a house and he heard stuff coming from the garage. So he called the cops. He felt like someone might've been in there and uh, he called the cops and he was like, okay, guys, like, hold on. Like, I'm going to, you know, open this door so they opened the door, and all the noises were, were just a bunch of rats. Yeah, and the right. cops were just like, oh, oh, it's rats. And then they're just like, okay. See ya. <laughs> yeah, bye. And the guy's like, well, wait, would you're not going to help me? Like, look at all these rats. They're just like everywhere. It's just over, the place was overrun because all this mm. trash had been in there piling up, which is another kind of spiritual metaphor. Yep. Yep. Trash hadn't been taken out. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I remember when I heard the story, I thought, Wow, the cops just were just like, oh, it's not our jurisdiction. Like, we'll just leave. And I kind of felt like, shouldn't they have done something? But they were completely comfortable just saying, oh, okay, well, that's not our department. And we're okay with that. And I don't know, I just kind of was thinking of it while you guys were talking about authority and jurisdiction. And Yeah, I'll, I'll give you an example of that, Kat. So... I had this individual years ago come to me who felt like he needed to uh, be delivered from some oppressive things, demonic things that were bothering him. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, okay, so we talked a little bit, 
And and then I, I said, okay, and so we and we prayed. And as I began to pray for him, he began to writhe and do all this stuff. And what came to me was he doesn't want to let go of this. Not really. Mm. Right? Yeah. So I just stopped and I looked at the individual and I says, You really don't want to let this go, do you? Deep down. You know it's bothering you, you know it's there, but you don't want to let it go of it. And he said, yeah. He says, and I looked at him, I says, until you do that, I can't, I, I can't do anything. I, I have absolutely no authority over your will. So, yeah, it, it can be the same thing with the cops and rats. Yeah. You know? I think the rats in the garbage is an, a wonderful metaphor for what this really is. Mm -hmm. um, and... I, I do think that there is, uh, let, let's kind of take a second to define what I think garbage is or what you think garbage is. I mean, to me, garbage would be things like unforgiveness. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's really good. That's garbage like the for biggest spiritual rats. Mm -hmm. Um, what are some other examples? Um, traumas were, you were potentially either the perpetrator or the recipient that can be mm -hmm. a draw to that. Kind of like a um, judgmentalism too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it's amazing that to stand, you know, and I think we'll <clears throat> later on go through a lot more of these uh, different venues of what it means to stand. But, um, especially the one about putting on the helmet because you want to protect against all the lies of the enemy. Yeah. Well, how many of us realize how many of those lies we're listening to on a regular basis and are where they, and then how and what door we open for them to flood into us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those are the little aspects that I think down the road we can talk more about. And, uh, um, Hopefully, you know, help maybe help some of you to understand because it, it happens to all of us, and especially when we're unaware, especially when we're, we're like we're not either standing or we're just we're passive. Yeah. I think I'm going to spend some time this week really meditating on the full armor of God. Yeah. I, I, I'm kind of thinking the parable of the sower. Um, I think it's in Matthew chapter 13. Maybe it's when the when the description of it, what it meant in verse 18, possibly. But it, I think it talks about the seeds that's been scattered, and then the enemy comes along and steals them away. Mm -hmm. um, that is absolutely to me something that can happen to us while we are standing, right? Um, and it can absolutely happen if we're not eyes wide open, alert, mm -hmm. taking guard, because what are those seeds other than possibly the things that we're standing in faith, hoping, the, the hope that we've seen, right? Um, yeah, I, I almost want to make sure that we're not dismissing the possibility that the enemy does want to come and steal those things, steal your dreams, mm -hmm. steal your, steal the plan, steal the purposes, right? And encroach on us. Yeah. And that's where we need to be on guard. So when we're standing, we need to be on guard. I think one of the things too, and, and we can uh, unravel this a lot more, but I just want to throw it in real quick before we leave you guys <clears throat> is that, the sword in this context is not an is not so much an offensive weapon like you're going to go Correct. create battle, and and we'll talk more about rhema word, logos word, and what those mean and so forth. But a good example of that is when Jesus was being tempted. Remember in the wilderness, and and each time Satan came to him, and what Jesus said in reality. He, he, he said, the Father says this, the Father says that. You know, you shall not live, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. So he had, it, for the smokescreen 
of, of delusion and, and deception that Satan was trying to cover Jesus in his weak moment was, what did Jesus rely on? He relied on the word of the Father in that moment. Mm-hmm. You know, what God brought up in him, he relied on that, that diffused that cloud of deception mm-hmm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. Let's, let's bless the believers mm-hmm. and the listeners. Mm-hmm. So, Father, I'd, I would just release a blessing of shalom, that order out of chaos over all of those listening over their households, Father, that you would just release the beauty of shalom, of protection, of wholeness, of, of, of all that it means, Lord, over each one. In the name of Jesus, Father. God, we submit to the authority you've given us and the jurisdictions you've given us, and we also take the authority that you've given us in the places in which we have it. Help us to use it wisely and recognize it, but not have it be something that puffs us up with arrogance. Bless us with the ability to stand and thank you for guarding that which we hoped for and fulfilling and manifesting the evidence of things unseen. Mm -hmm. I sure would appreciate your feedback. If you enjoyed today's episode, please click like or rate us with five stars and be sure to leave a comment. If you have not already subscribed, please do that as well and turn alerts on. This way you'll automatically know when we post our next installment. You have our permission to share this podcast. If you have a story you would like to share or a question we can answer, you can email us at fellowshipcast7 at gmail.com. That's fellowshipcast7 at gmail.com.